<laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, what in the heck is that? But yeah, yeah. This, is this is cool. I can hear everybody. Okay. Okay, good. We're ready to go. <laughs> we are ready to go. Yeah, I'm thinking, what is this is cool. I can hear everybody. We are ready to go. And uh Okay, let me make sure I it says record at the top of my screen. Yeah, it's being recorded live on Facebook. Okay. Well, and uh, YouTube, I think. Yeah, we on. Oh, yeah, we are, well, we on Instagram. Then I'll put it on YouTube later. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We are ready to go. <laughs> good morning. Good, right. good, uh, good evening, gentlemen. So I'm so thankful and so excited to be a part of this moment because this is what we call our impact moments, and it's it's based upon our nonprofit 180 Impact. And so we are. We 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 like to have uh, interesting stories and and great uh, sto stories to be told because and so both of you have a very unique and very great story. And so I wanted this to be a part of our uh, of our of our of our moments. And so we wanted to to make sure that we captured you all's story because this is this is really some great information and also you know just great testimonies about your story, your life, and how things have turned out and and the way that things did. You know, some, so many times I know at our church, we have a, a, a ministry called um, uh, Tory program. Yeah, the Tory program, <laughs> the Tory program, where they they actually do help people that have been incarcerated when they come out to uh, kind of get their life back on track. And so they do those types of things. But I noticed when even we, we have the graduation, some of them, you know, they say they were able to obtain housing or, housing or they were not able to obtain housing or they may have gotten employment or they may not have gotten employment. And so, you know, so that's so many, much of that happens to some of our brothers and our sisters that come out of prison or come out of jail and they they really don't have that that support and so sometimes the they, yeah. yeah, the resources and the support, so it may cause them, you know, to fall back or, you know, just or not to know exactly what to do. And so I wanted to I wanted to highlight Thomas brought this idea to me. So it wasn't even mad, but when he brought it to me, you know, I get I get excited about all this kind of stuff. So I'm really excited today. And so but it's such it's so, you know, so he brought it to me. So he's co-hosting. So I'm not going to be doing that much talking. I'm just talking right now. But anyway, he is because it is called Men of Favor. And so I want the men to, to do what they do. And so I'm always excited about that. So I'll be on here, but I'm going to let him talk. And so I've talked to each of you and I've been fascinated just by what the conversations we've had about mm -hmm. you all story. So I'm excited about that. So I'm really going to turn it over to Thomas and I'm going to let him take the wheel. Go ahead, Thomas. <laughs> well, well at least I didn't plan on letting me take the wheel. I just thought you were going to ask some stories and I was going to give some input. <laughs> okay, well, I, can, I mean, I can do that. I can't because he's let a you start well, off with some questions. I mean, let, let, let me say this. Let me just say okay. this. I, uh, I, uh, my education background is in rehabilitation counseling. I got my degree from UNT. And, uh, one of my practicum experiences was working for the uh, parole and pardons department uh, upon uh, intake in part in the intake department where prisoners would be released and they would be one of the first faces they seen when they come to see their parole office. So I've got uh, I've had I got some experience and knowledge on the transition process, but uh, I know that you know Denise, you guys may have some questions and. And uh, and uh, I can just kind of interject, and I'm going to let them do most of the talking. But I can just interject on my experience from an educational uh, perspective, and also from my personal experience with working with prisons. Okay, I mean uh, parolees. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted. To, I want. I'm, I'm going to let them tell their story because I think that uh, I'm, I get, we get more people in, so we get these other people on the line. Uh, you know, I just want them to be able to tell. So I'll start with Stancy. And so let's talk about Stancy because Stancy actually developed a program while he was incarcerated that really has helped a lot of the young men that are that are that were in 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 in, in incarcerated with him. 
And then when he got out of out of prison, he uh he was able to. I, I, I'm gonna let you tell the story because I don't want to tell it. Come on, Stan. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, I'm uh, telling uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Stancy Lloyd. Um, what was that? My name is Stancy Lloyd, and um, at the time I'm uh, 50 years young. I went in, in, into the institution uh, back in 91, 92. And uh, from there, um, I always told myself, I'm not a product of that environment. So even though I made a mistake, went to prison and everything like that, but uh, I, I, was, I was the type of guy, I had, you know, choose my own way. I wasn't uh, gonna follow everything, what everybody else was doing. Uh, my objective was that this is not the end of the road. This is a mistake I made, and life goes on, and you know you have to, you know you have to sit there and you know, you uh, look, take a look at yourself in the mirror and find out, hey, what am I gonna do once this is over? And so that was one of my biggest things that uh, no matter what, I wasn't gonna come back into society uh, not knowing, uh, having no type of skills, anything like that. So that was my main objective uh, to come out of prison and to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, in regards of uh, working, starting a business or anything like that. And then while I was there, uh, I went through every program they had. I mean, every program. And the program, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't developing me. Um, once I went to college, Don, I went to college also, Don, yeah. Went to uh, Trinidad Valley Community College and did that. But it was some things still missing. And so I went and searched uh, what can I do? How can I help myself? Because I, you know, you still have that. Uh, can everybody hear me? It's like everybody went mute. Okay, I can't. No, we're hear on mute. We're listening. We can hear you. We just muting, so we won't have any uh, interference with your share. Okay. And so after that, once once uh once I uh, uh took on a different program that they offer, like I say, if some still missing, and so. I went and searched, I did some soul search and I come up with a program called Second Chance Men. And uh, from there, like I, like I was explaining to Denise and I've talked to Thomas about it that, um, you know, everybody want a second chance in life, want a second chance is something to make, uh, to correct themselves or correct the situation. And so from there, um, like I said, I went to doing a lot of soul searching, a lot of research and I started looking at that man in the mirror. You know, that's, that's, that's the, once you just really look at that man in the mirror and find out and understand, hey, it's your fault. You know, uh, whatever situation, however you make your life to be, it's your fault that your life is like that because you have to make some changes in your attitude, changes in your conduct, changes in your behavior, uh, and also changes in your skills uh, to make yourself marketable uh, to, the, to the job market. And if not, if you can't do that, then you make yourself, you create, business for yourself. Hello? Yeah. Okay, you can we're hear here. It looks like you're frozen me? just for a minute. Okay. I think that man that 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 says a lot about yourself. I mean wanting to improve where you've been and where you're going. But what I want to iterate mostly is how did we get here? You know, and a lot of young men, particularly myself, we didn't have fathers. I'm not going to say that's an excuse, you know, because it's not because each individual has to be responsible for himself. And like I said, I think we need to figure out how do we get here and how do we prevent from going in that direction? And then if we have been in that direction, what? mindset and what skills and just basic things that we do every day that's natural to the, the the productive person in this life in this world you know and one thing is is your environment you know I think if you change your environment it's going to give you a different perspective of tra a different train of thought does that make sense yes Okay, so even if you live in the projects, say, you know, and, 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 
everything around you is 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 just crazy. There's no home for for your television, your shoes, or anything. You can improve yourself by just cleaning up your immediate environment. It's going to give you a different frame of mind. And I think when you when you when you really think about it, because you probably be a testament. When we were in jail, everything had a home. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't much space. So you kept your toothbrush here. You kept your you, the neatness that you had in jail is the neatness that you need to, you know, maintain out in the world. Does that make sense? And yes. then education. I mean, a lot of us, you know, the education system here in Dallas wasn't very good for, for us. For me, it wasn't. So I didn't learn much, you know, and for you to be able to go to school and continue to grow, you know, educationally, that's perfectly fine. I mean, I mean, I, I take my hat off to you, but me personally, I had to do with myself. Like he said, you do with yourself and willpower. See, willpower is my 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 um definition is 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 being able to do the right thing. And when we talk to God, that gives us willpower. Does that make sense? So if you're talking to God and God is giving you the power to do the things you need to do, it is going to allow you to um, make the right decisions opposed to going and standing on the corner drinking that 40 with your friends, you're going to do something more productive. And then it's easy to do the wrong thing, but the willpower will give you the, oper- the, the power to do the right thing. And that's go to the gym, do something productive, start your business, opposed to going and hanging out with Tom, Dick, and Harry. <laughs> Excuse my language, but that's real, you know. Yeah. And, and when yeah. when when you can actually con- get your willpower strong enough to do the things that you need to do in this world, we could prevent going to the penitentiary, you know. And another thing, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, no, I was just I was thinking about what you were saying, and I, I thought about it. You know, when we were younger, you know, sometimes our parents, you know, or they told us, they said, no, don't go, don't hang. I know, I, I know my mother would say, don't hang with them little fast tail girls because they're going to get you in trouble. So you don't need to go down there and hang with them. Or they would say, or to my brothers, she would say, well, no, you don't need to go down there and hang with them boys on that corner because, and, and when you think about it, I, I, I've said this before, when you think about it, some of that was your first alcoholic beverage. That was your mm-hmm. first uh, 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 reefer. I, I, well, if I'm dating myself, but that's what they called it when exactly. I was talking reefers. And then some of it was your first cigarettes. All of that. I remember being 12 years old. This is a funny story because you always got a funny story. I was 12 years old and we were down at, at we were at church downstairs in the basement smoking cigarettes. We were 12. I'll tell you how old we were. We were 12. And we were down in the basement smoking the cigarettes and one of the one of the deacon's wives came in. She, I mean, she wow. was letting us have it too. She called us. And she said, I'm going to tell all your parents. And I told her, I, I, t- I this is what I told her. I said, if you don't tell my mother, I swear I will never smoke again. Because my mother was going to kill me. I knew what she was going to do. I wasn't going to be here today if I if she had told it. And I told her, I said, I mean, I will never smoke again. And so I didn't. And, and, but she would ask me all the time. She said, you, you have you had, you have any cigarettes? I said, no, ma'am, I have not smoked again. Because <laughs> I did not want her to tell my mother that because that was going to be a situation all by itself. So exactly. I know what you're talking about when we have to make those decisions. But see, at the time, we thought we knew better than what our parents did. We didn't think they knew anything. So we went on and done those things. Right. And then that caused us to get in these situations. That's all exactly. I want to say. Go ahead, Ralph. Exactly. Um, Again, the willpower, I mean, if you get on your knees and ask God for strength for whatever it is that you're trying to do, just to, Lord, give me the strength to to make it through the next day. You know what's right for me. The will of God is right. You know what I mean? It's, It's right, regardless of how you look at it. It's right. And if you're praying to God, your will will be righteous. You know, that's a point that I wanted to make. And a lot of us get involved with drugs and alcohol, you know, and that leads us down this rabbit hole where a lot of times ends up in the penitentiary because you, you're just doing whatever, your lack of willpower, lack of guidance, lack of covering from the Lord. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. 
when a lot of guys don't realize when you doing drugs it kills your 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 ability to um function correctly okay everybody knows that but where i'm going is that nutrition it kills the, the it blocks the nutrition from from the brain and a lot of times if, if anybody knows after you've gotten off work say for instance just if you've gotten off work and you're hungry and you're used to drinking beer after work that satisfies your your nutritional need does that make sense it satisfies your nutritional need so when you feel like you have a temptation to do whatever it is that you're doing that, that you're trying to fight for as drugs and alcohol if you decide to get something to eat opposed to uh that drug of choice or that beer or whatever i guarantee you it'll be suffice if anybody's out there listening and uh you're having an addiction issue sit down and eat a sandwich because all that is is your, your body's craving some nutrition I've done it. You're off work. I've worked hard like an animal, ate lunch, and everybody went to the beer store, and then you drink a beer, and now you're not even hungry anymore. Give me another beer, dog. <laughs> and then you end up, <laughs> you know, you drank six beers, and now you can't even get up and function and go to work tomorrow. So yeah, can, I, can, I, uh, can I say something? Yeah, because substance abuse has been an elephant in the room in the Afro-American community. Uh, and it seemed like it just, the, the issue skyrocketed uh, after the 70s and 80s is when the, we really started having some, first it was crack epidemic that caused a lot of our young men to be incarcerated because, you know, I, like, I, like I would say to a lot of guys when they get out of prison, because you know, when you get out of prison, they give you that look, just enough money to go back out there and buy that next, slab of dope so you can go back out on the corner. I call it mm -hmm. systematic uh, 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 pimping. You know, you get just that money and, and because they don't they don't have options. You know, they don't give you many options. They just give you right. give you give you that money and they don't give you options. Uh, if there's no rehabilitation in prison, then when you come out, you have nothing to work with because you haven't been you you, you know that you 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 already coming out from an institutional uh, a frame of mind. And that's the reason a lot of guys go into, I see a revolving door where they go end up back in prison. There's no transition option, because what, what do they do? Now, I know from my experience, you know, some of, some of the guys that would come from the halfway house or they would come, uh, they would they parole to someone's house, they come and do their first parole meeting. And then when you go to asking them, about their goals, what are they planning on doing? Uh, uh, you know, maybe if they only had a short period of time, they're going to be on parole. But what are their what are what is their plan of action? None of them would have a plan of action. Right. And uh, how many know? I mean, you know, going and, and y'all could probably attest to this. You know, uh, going into prison, had some goals and dreams, and then once you got into prison, those goals and dreams died. And then you lost some years, uh, some years of uh, while you were in prison. So when you come out, you got you're a different person. So you're not even sure if you have the same goals and dreams you had that you went back in prison. So a lot of times men come out there confused. And uh, for me, Thomas, I had you know when I went to jail, I had a lot of hopes and dreams. And this is the, this is the biggest part of what happens to us as black men in, in, in society. We have these dreams, but we don't have the willpower to pursue them. And once, 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 once I, have, I had a good train of thought, I lost it. It's unbelievable. Um, we, we, get, we get in these uh, uh, situations. Well, okay, here I'm, I'm back on track. Thank God. Um, we, um, a lot of times we're moving too fast in this world. If you don't, like I said, it goes back to the environment. If you don't have a decent environment to lay your head, to think about what it is that you want to do the next day, you know, and 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 watch TV and have food and and the air conditions blowing 
and you're comfortable at home. A lot of us, when we're in the hood, you're never comfortable at home because home's not comfortable. You end up on the street, hanging out on the street. You know what I mean? Then you go home at night when it's time to go to sleep. You know what I mean? Because I know if you've never been there, you probably will never understand it. I mean, seriously, because living in the ghetto is not a joke. People get up in the morning and they have not. Why would you want to be at home where there's there's filth? Your, your your bed is is not you know what I mean comfortable enough. But you go get drunk and you come home and fall asleep. You're fine. Then you get back over and start that cycle all over again. See, but jail gave me a chance to slow my life down. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because I was moving a hundred miles an hour. Sansi, can you mute your, can excuse me, Sansi, can you mute yourself? You can we get a lot of feedback from you. I was I was um going a hundred miles an hour. And just those two years where I had a structure, get up in the morning, eat your breakfast, go to the fields, come back in, you know what I mean? Eat your lunch, go back out in the fields, and then come home and shower, and then go to bed. A lot of us as black men don't have that structure. And it's virtually impossible for a woman to teach a black man some structure. You know, and a lot of these guys get, get a lot of them, they take on a female's uh, uh, emotion issue. Because a female, if they're raised by females, the female gets emotional. And she goes crazy. She screams and hollers. And then these females are raising these men, and these men are way stronger. And then if they get in their feelings, they can do harm to people. You know what I mean? They beat them up. They get violent because they've been feelings have been hurt. You know what I mean? And 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 just the the process of slowing down. Even when you get when you get out of jail, you have to slow down. You have to have willpower. You have to know get your environment together, and you have to have goals. See, I mean, when I say goals, people say, "Oh, I want to be a a doctor in ten years." No. Those are things that those are beautiful goals, but small goals. This is what I learned in prison. Small goals. Give yourself 30 minutes to clean your area up. You know what I mean? That's a sense of accomplishment. Give yourself uh, an hour or whatever, a time period to do these very small, tiny goals. And then it grows into larger goals. And then you become the man that you want to be with the willpower, with your environment structure, and uh, um, drugs and alcohol, because you can easily fall back into where you've been if you're dealing with drugs and alcohol. You know what I mean? So Ralph, it's, it's, Ralph, yes. we're gonna. Uh, I got we got a question, and then uh, I'm a some uh, one, someone asked a question directly to you, and then we're gonna let Stancy. Uh, Okay. The question is, if school did not help you, this is someone talking to you, if school did not help you with your learning, mm -hmm. what did you do to educate yourself with developing your basic learning of reading, writing, math, and et cetera? And if you could be, give us like two minutes and then so we can give Stancy a time to... Uh... Well, <laughs> it wasn't a process that happened overnight. Believe it or not, the cell phone has helped me learn to, to read and, and write and spell. Because I had like, dyslexia. I would put a uh, spell U, Y U A, Y U O. You know what I mean? I, could, I, I, I just couldn't do it. It just was one of those things that was, was, was a hindrance to me. But what you do, is apply yourself. When you apply yourself, you can do anything that you want to do. I mean, when you apply yourself, say, I'm going to read a paragraph a day, or I'm going to read three sentences a day. 
I'm going to learn to spell three words a day. If, if you apply yourself, you can do anything. God has given us the ability to do whatever it is in this world that we want to do, but you have to apply yourself. And 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 far as schooling, I mean, it 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 it, it things. You know, I even wrote notes here, and I'm a terrible speller, but I've applied myself enough where I can function in this world, and I've developed a a skill that I make quite a bit of money. You know what I mean? And if you're not a scholar, you use your hands better than you do your brain, <laughs> find something that you can do. They, they have truck driving, they have air conditioning schools, they have all types of things that you can do with your hands. You know, but you, you, you're gonna have to develop your reading and writing skills and that goes to applying yourself. All right, you know, thank you, I, go, go ahead, I, Denise. I, 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 well, you know what I think? I think what you what you've accomplished is that the art of discipline, because you've been able to discipline yourselves, and like you said, you you started with those small goals, just keeping your area clean. And 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 when we do those, I mean, even now, if if you if you're in your home or wherever, if you keep your area clean and you and you, or either you clean up, you say, "Oh, I'm cleaning up today. This is my cleaning day," and you get that accomplished. I know for myself, when I get that accomplished, I just keep going back in the room looking at it because exactly. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'll be so happy it's done. And so I'd go back and I'd just be sitting in there looking, just happy about it because it's done. And like you said, it's a sense of accomplishment. And I think right. with that, with anything, when we make those small goals, and, and one of the things like, like with weight loss, because you talked about going to the gym. And so with, even with that, going to the gym, I remember when I, uh, I, was, I was on a journey to lose weight. And so I was like over 300 and some pounds. And so right. I lost weight. But what I did was when I started going back to the gym, not that I don't need, I need to get back to it. But when I was going to the gym at that point in time, I took my time. I knew the people that on this side of the treadmill and on this side of the tread on this side of me, they might have mm -hmm. had it at 8.2. I had mine on two point something until I could move it up to three point something, till I could move That's it up right. to four point something. But what That's that taught right. me was uh, a, a tenacity to keep going little by little. I remember seeing a young lady at the gym and she was she was plus like me. She was a, a big girl. She was doing everything. She was going on the elliptical. She was going on the treadmill. She was going on the bike. I said, she ain't coming back. <laughs> I said, she ain't gonna come back. And yeah, because she don't wore herself out. You just gotta get in there and stay and don't focus on what everybody else is doing. They probably have been doing that for, for a long time, and so they can do that, but I couldn't do that. So wasn't no need in me doing that, making myself because then I wasn't gonna come back. So, but right. I paced myself, and because of that, I remember when I first started getting on the elliptical machine, I could only do 10 minutes. That's all I could do. And so right. I did the, I would do the uh the what is it, the treadmill for 30, and then I'd get on that elliptical for 10 minutes until I was able to do 30 minutes. But it took me some time to work up to it. And I think when it we does. just myself like that then we see the short-term goals and then we can reach the longer term goals because there's so many like you said so many young men that are being raised by women my like my my, my brother was fortunate enough my father died when i was 12 and he was 17 but then one of his friend my father's friends kind of took up the load took up the place you know what i'm saying he kind of was mm -hmm. in his life still teaching him stuff still doing those kind of things so he was fortunate in that area but still, you know, our mothers do the best they can. But it's like you said, they so emotional sometimes. And then everybody emotional and it's a hot mess. But it's, it's so good to know that, you know, you have to, you, you, what, what you said was so good. You have to pace yourself. And then you have to, like with the reading and the writing, you just have to keep practicing it. Because all of us had to practice it. It wasn't that right. we were so smart, but we all had to keep practicing. As they right. took up through the things, that's just what happened. And so we got exactly. better at it. I'm an author, but do I write grammatically correct? No, I do not. And so I have to have an editor. And so and I'm clear, right. I'm, I'm okay with that. Ain't it? it is what it is. I was a math person. So, but anyway, that, that's the thing you have to understand that you can still accomplish goals. You might just have to go through a different avenue to get there. Thank I you. That was amazing. That I was think amazing. that's good, uh, the uh, art uh, of uh, discipline. Uh, I think that's good. Okay. Yeah. The art of discipline. Okay. What, one right. thing I kind of want to get into because I know both of you guys have been self owners, self starters as far as business is concerned. I know one of the obstacles that a lot of, of people that come out of parole, I mean, come out of prison, have is that their their ability to find a job, ability to find housing. We're going to talk about job uh, uh, becoming self employed first. How you how you uh, became self employed, the the steps you took. 
And then uh, we're going to talk about housing. We're going to talk about housing because those are two obstacles I know that a lot of men that come out of parole, they have issues with when they get out of parole, trying to find a place to stay and getting mm -hmm. a job. Dancy, can we mm -hmm. start with you? Yeah, uh, number one thing, uh, housing, housing. Okay, someone in your family can house you six months. You can get in, you can get, stay with a person, uh, stay with a family member for six months. But you have to have that self evaluation. You wait yourself and say, hey, I got six months. What am I going to do? You find your job. Man, look, I'm, I'm going to explain it to you like this here. I swept floors, I uh, cleaned the warehouse, I packed boxes. I put a tool belt, stood in front of Home Depot, and made five hundred dollars a day. You know what I'm saying? Because I got a skill. My skill was uh, I'm an HVAC technician, but I know how to put nails on the board. I know how to read a tape measure. So instead of standing on the sign, and say, "Hey," uh, stand on the street with a sign, and say, "Hey, help!" Hey, stand stand on the corner, and say, "Hey, I need a job." And that that's that's my thing. If, if God forbid, if things go so bad for me, stand on the corner with a sign and say, I don't want your money, I don't want your handout, I need a job, I want a job. You know, and that that's one of the things uh, a lot of brothers may come out of this, come out of the institution. You don't want to look at that man in the mirror. And that man in the mirror allow you to have that self-evaluation. And so uh, in my in my times, well, when I was in that institution, I taught those, hey, I had a mirror. Look at this, this is you, man. You did this here. You created this here. So you have to uncreate this here. You know what I'm saying? So you had the negative and the positive. Uh, write down all the ugly things you don't like about yourself. Write down the things that you like about yourself. And that's how I approached it, you know, because this is what I did with myself. Set, set inside that five by nine cell at, at nine by six or whatever the size of the cell is, sat in there and uh, did some soul searching, did some contemplating. And uh, like I say, one of the things that that man in the mirror, and so you have to have some, uh, uh, I was told a long time ago, you have to put your peas in order. Your principles, partners, and perspectives, and your values. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, uh, I understand growing up in the hood is hard, uh, but then that's an excuse because uh, the opportunity is always there. Like I was telling Denise uh, uh, earlier today before we started the Zoom, you pray and ask God to do this, ask God to do that, but then the number one thing is God, that old parable say, I sent you a boat, I sent you a ship. I sent you a man on a donkey, but you, you, hey, you let all these opportunities pass by. You didn't grab hold to now one of these opportunities. Sometimes you got to ask somebody, hey, man, what did you do? Uh, I'm going to give you a prime example because uh, I, I use myself as a big example. When you come out of the institution, you have credit. You have a credit score, but you don't have no established credit. When I came out of the institution, my credit score was 611. I didn't have no established credit. Didn't have no... Uh, a no bank account. So them little jobs I went to, uh, hey, I, I started stack, hey, saving my pennies. You know, I went down to a credit unit in Texas, put a, open up an account with $25, and hey, I get to a point where you have your check going to be directly deposited into the bank. I even worked at nightclub. So all the money I made at the nightclub, I deposited inside credit unit in Texas. You know, and I didn't have a forwarded check to give them at the time until I went and got a, got a job working at the warehouse with a staff nation. That's the number one thing that killed jobs here in the United States, the staffing agencies. Because it's like a, a, a herd of cow. You herd all these people in, and out of 500 uh, people that come in for a job, uh, you probably hire 20 of them. You know what I'm saying? And then the thing about it is that you get around the insurance, you get around reckless compensation, you get around all these things. And it's just another tool that, that uh, 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 as they say, the one percenters are using not to pay these extra costs in regards of uh, having a proper business running with the rules that was already established in the United States. So that's neither here or there, but then that's how I start. When I start understanding the system, that's when I can make some changes with myself uh, uh, in here when I got home. Uh, like I said, you have to have some established You have a credit score. And you just, like I said, you don't have no establishment. So what you have to do is start establishing some type of credit. Where you go on to a uh, rental center, you rent some furniture or whatever, when, once you get uh, 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 get a, a place to stay. Uh, like I say, a family member can hire you six months. In six months, you can save enough money. And then the number one thing is that they do have apartment complexes that are, uh, uh, that are uh, 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 
allow ex-offenders to get a place to stay. Yeah, some of them is run down or some of them you don't like staying there. But it all, hey, um, one thing I learned about being in the United States is there is a will, there is a way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because you can you can go in and yeah, talk to the manager. He can look at you. Hey, I'm going to give you a chance. Man, there it is. And so you don't mess that up. Like I say, the second chance plan program, you don't mess that chance up. And, but you don't, when you don't mess that chance up, you open doors for other brothers and other sisters to come behind you with that same ex or that same stigmatism. You know what I'm saying? It's so opportunity. So they, you know, I don't have a problem uh, running next to people. Hey, they better than some people who have a job who, who don't have a record. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to be there and they know one thing the mistake you're gone. So that's how I look at it. You know, I, I don't make excuses. You know, uh, that's that's one of the things that uh, I used to tell the brothers in. You know, like we had a session called Keeping It Real. I'm going to tell you the way it is, man, because I want you, I want to, I want to receive it the same way I'm giving it. Don't beat around the bush. Don't show the code. And I don't need an anesthesia. <laughs> you know, but that, that's just the way it is. I know yeah. that you, okay, right now you have your own truck driving business. Can you mm -hmm. give some insight to someone that may be watching and mm -hmm. want to know how to get started in business with a price with, with, with this uh, a bullseye on their back. How do they how do they get started in business? What did you do? How did you transition from being employed employed and employable to being to uh owning your own business? And I'm gonna okay, uh, okay, number one thing, uh, a lot of brothers and sisters, uh, well, a lot of brothers don't know that the uh workforce commission, they'll pay for your drive like they'll pay they'll pay for any trade you would like to go into. So they got a program called the WIOA. I'm gonna repeat that so people can understand what I'm saying. The WIOA program. What that program do is that uh Texas uh they have set aside some money for people who want to further their education, further their skills or what have you. And what they do is they'll pay for you to take this program and then they'll uh, school uh, they're uh, uh, associated with the uh, uh, Workforce Commission. The only stipulation is that when you was 18 years old, you had to be declared for the draft, as they call it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so once once all that is said and done, uh, a young lady by the name Latoya Hart that worked for the uh, Workforce Commission over here in uh, Southwest Dallas, over here where we stay at, uh, she a beautiful sister. She don't mind helping you, but she no nonsense. You know what I'm saying? She's straight across the board. Uh, also, the Workforce Commission, I understand with the COVID thing, has put everything down the back burner. They give you vouchers, bus passes, and all this shit, right? So when I did that, I went and got my CDL. Uh, from there, I found that uh, in some cases it says, have you been convicted of a felony in years, right? So no, my conviction happened 20 years ago. So I got on with a company called PFG. PFG or uh, a uh, car performing group over here. Uh, you, I tell uh, when I'm at parole office, I tell them all the time, hey man, opportunity at uh, uh, performance school group. They'll hire you, they understand your background, they're kind of soft or kind of lenient, but don't mess the opportunity up. I didn't send a lot of guys over there to get a job. You know, uh, praise be to Almighty God that they would never got a job. You start off, if you don't have your CDLs, what they'll do is you call a truck help. You have to unload the truck. They they unload at uh at a uh, uh wing stops, pizza places, uh Chuck E. Cheese's, you know, you that's where you start out as a truck helper while you're going to school to get your truck driving license, right? Um so once you can start driving a truck, my thing is I understand that the trucking industry is a hundred and forty three billion dollar industry. I understand that. I understand uh that. United States truckers are short 500,000 truckers. You know what I'm saying? So when I understood that, I said, hold on, wait a minute. I'm driving this truck. I'm going to Midland every day, three, uh, twice a week. You know what I'm saying? And uh, get home on a Thursday. I'm like, man, all the time. I said, you know what? Let me, let me do. I started doing some research. Find out. When once I understood my, 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 my credit, I didn't have any established credit, and I started establishing credit. So with the job, I had a direct deposit. Once my score reached the 680, uh, you got different banks. They'll, they'll deal with you, 680, uh, 660, they'll work with you. But uh, I started, what I, what I did, I went in and got what they call a secure credit loan. 
I took two hundred fifty dollars into the bank. I gave it. I gave them two hundred fifty dollars. I'm using their system to create or establish credit history. So I take the two hundred fifty dollars. They're gonna charge you forty three dollars and twenty three cents a month, right? They're gonna take if you don't pay that forty three dollars twenty twenty cents twenty three cents a month. You pay that out. You pay that out of your checking account. That two hundred fifty dollars is still there. You just got got a limit of two hundred fifty. After ninety days, they're gonna come to you and ask you, "Do you want a, a, a loan increase?" Now, uh, six months, they're gonna ask you, "Do you want an unsecured credit card?" But a lot of people don't understand this here. You know what I'm saying? And so this is another thing that every brother I come and talk, I mean, from the east coast to the west coast, at all times, brothers, you know, driving. I tell them this. Um, yeah, stop. But you understand, man, you got to know. If you don't know the rules, if you like they like to say in the street, you don't know the game. Hey, the game to be so not told. I'm telling the game. I don't mind telling because I always say the knowledge don't belong to me. It belongs to God. You know what I'm saying? Some people may not believe in God. Hey, that's your business. Hey, with you, but I believe in God because I know don't no man uh, flip the night and the day up every day, make the sun, make it rain. I know no man have no control of that. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe in a big bang theory after my research that's a bunch of hogwash but anyway uh once brothers go to understanding the credit game then you can say hold on wait a minute you meant to tell me how i can do this here well let me try this here one thing that be the failure if you don't try that's right you know what i'm saying because uh once you once you go in and start asking questions man I have five to ten questions I went into the, the, my bank up here at BBVA where I got all my account in Navy Federal. I had 10 questions. The lady say, you pretty knowledgeable. No, nope. I just want to understand where I'm putting my money and what the return on my money. You know, once I start doing this here, if I do this, and so like like uh, uh, rappers go to sin, I have small goals. I live my life right now. Praise be to almighty God. One to three years, three to five years. I came home in 2012. I did everything to do in five Five years I did it in three. And people, they like, man, what you doing? Are you selling dope? Man, that life is behind me. I'd never go back down that road. You know what I'm saying? And then a lot of brothers that's driving trucks that own operators, they say the trucking industry is a new dope game. You know what I'm saying? And so, which it is in a way, because I can drive a thousand miles and earn three thousand dollars. You know, and once you understand the dynamics of the trucking industry or the dynamics of the financial institution, then you can say, okay, let me. Let me let me let me try this here. Don't be scared because hey, it's your money. What, what's going to happen? It's like with the stock market. You know, you you taking a chance, but you taking a chance with an institution that's already established. And the majority of times, when people go to a uh, Bank of America, uh, 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 Chase. They go to all these different banks. But you got to understand, these people use your money to invest. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason why they want you to have a board of check. And they say, hey. We got this amount of money coming in every month, every week. So we can invest this money here. And then they use that money to invest to grow the business. But the one thing is let them do what they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to get established and get, in, get your foot in the door. Once you get your foot in the door, because you always have somebody that's in the bank. Remember this, whether they black, white, Hispanic, Chinese, Vietnamese, whatever. You have somebody that's willing to show you the different steps to get where you're trying to go. You know what I'm saying? Uh, once I once I uh, did those steps, start getting established a, in three years, I had a house. Praise be to Almighty God. Started a business, you know. But like like uh, Ralph say, you you have to have some discipline. You have to have some small goals you, you that you move towards. But I had blinders on. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had blinders on, and but nothing gonna get in my way. You know, you have to be that determined. You know, that that's the that's the reason why uh, I thank God allowed me to bless me where I'm at because I don't mind helping nobody. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind sharing the information, but uh you 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 have to do these things here because God opened other doors and other avenues because you have to have a network of people that you deal with, you know. And so if anybody got any questions or uh, I don't it's mind. It's interesting that you would say that because uh you know, that grace is given unto us after we've made out, once we start doing that damage control 
from what mm -hmm. the destructive pattern that path that we were on. Once we start doing damage control, God begins to open doors and give us grace. Because you know, I've been I don't watch you from the time you got out. <laughs> Up until now. You know, yeah. uh, I seen you. Uh, you got on my nerves a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got a lot of courses. <laughs> he going to ask you yeah. for information. Now, he's going to hold you hostage and ask you for information. <laughs> but you see, he absorbed the information, and you see the product uh, that he has, the product that has that, that has been created by him absorbing information. And like you say, he have, uh, he have blind his own, and you don't have to return back to that same path, you know, there is a yeah. new way. And when God gives us that grace, you have to take that grace and let grace work for us. And that's what you're doing. So you, I know you own your own trucking company now and you're getting ready to start another rig, right? Yeah, I'm going to buy another truck in the next yeah. couple so of weeks, only next couple way months, whatever. Trucks now. And, I, and, I, don't, yeah. and I, I could just imagine what your 10-year goal is going to be like. Okay, so yeah. we're going we to we let Ralph uh, tell us a little bit about when he came out. How, okay, go ahead. I got one thing, Ralph, uh, you know, you know, and I know this here, Ralph, uh, mm -hmm. the people that are watching, uh, young men and women, crime cannot be an option. I don't care how hard right. it gets, how bad it gets, right. crime right. can't be an option. Because once, once right. crime becomes an option, then you allow yourself to slip back in that old mode, that old behavior, that old uh, mm -hmm. uh, way of thinking. Crime can't be an option. No. I just want to no. put that out there, the crime can't be an option. Now that you said that story, it's funny, mm -hmm. man. Um, I got out and I went to jail for selling drugs. And I told God I wasn't going to sell any more drugs. And then I just started my business and I do paintless dent repair. And I would go around to the dealerships and fix their cars doing their, their paintless dent repair. You know, the small dents and dings and stuff like that. And it was a tenor white guy coming to me and said, hey, man, do you know where to get some crack? And I'm like, yeah, I forgot about the, 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 the uh, vow that I made to God. And I went right, when, when, <laughs> went right down to the hood, got some crack. And then as soon as I bought the crack, I was going to say it to him. I said, didn't you talk to God about this? I spent 50 bucks. <laughs> 50 bucks, threw it out the window, and went right back to the dealership, told him, no, nah, man, I couldn't get in. You know what I mean? You, you're right. You cannot return back to the vomit of a dog. That, you know, that, you, know that, you just can't do that and expect any success. But that being said, you're right. My, 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 my experience was a little different. You know, I would like to say to anybody that is listening, attitude is key, you know, and it took me till I was 40 years old to know what a good attitude was. My mom always told me, you got a bad attitude. You got a bad attitude. You never know who, what, what is a bad attitude? Can anybody answer that question? What's a bad attitude? Well, it's usually I'm what we the feel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bad attitude is when we just, I mean, it's negative. A bad attitude is negative to me. That's what I consider a bad attitude or an attitude that, you know, you find wrong and you find something wrong with it, things that are good. And you just, it's just negative. I think that's what a bad attitude is. You know, that's my definition. I thought bad attitude was just, I was bad. I rode with, um, a guy from Arizona, from Arizona to Missouri. And we talked and he says, Ralph, you gotta, I was 40 years old. Ralph, you just gotta have a good attitude. I'm like, okay, man, tell me what a good attitude is. A good attitude is being willing to help in any situation with a smile, you know, it, it, if you're on a job and they say, could I get you to sweep that back room? But you didn't get hired to sweep that back room. But if you grab that broom with a smile and say, sure, 
and get over there and brush that. That's a good attitude. And most of the time, when people have great attitudes, excuse my language, being having a good attitude most of the time is the damn fool <laughs> on these jobs. You know what I mean? Because I know he'll do it because he's got a good attitude. But I guarantee you, when they need some help and they need some, some hours to be issued out, they're going to call you because you had a good attitude. You know what I mean? That's a good attitude. A bad attitude is, that ain't my job. I don't do that type of stuff. They ask you to do something, you frown. A good attitude will get you further than anything on this planet, especially in society. I don't care if it's me and Thomas, me and you, and you have something that you want me to do, and I'd say, nah, frown up. You don't want to deal with me. You have to be have a good attitude and have a willing spirit to do what's right. Like you said, I I re I reckon it, what's the word? I, <laughs> I I man, I recommend you for going the route that you did. It didn't happen like that for me. You know, you're a smart brother. You know what I mean? And and you got out and you went the systematic way of gaining where you are. I come from the streets. I'm a hustler. <laughs> Once I learned, yeah, I'm serious, man. I mean, straight out of the streets, you know. And I learned that if I had a good attitude and I was willing to 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 sacrifice myself and to discipline myself to get where I wanted to go, there's nothing can stop me with God's help, you know. And I went through a transition where I got out and I worked at Simon David. And no, I'm not a morning person. So I stocked groceries. And then once I stocked groceries, I, I ran into somebody that, and, and I lost my job stocking groceries because I was being too, how would they say, uh, bodacious. I'm a very, very, very aggressive per personality, you know, and that's from the streets. I had to learn that these people were afraid of me to be big and, and black. You have to know that these people are afraid of you and you have to have a great attitude and smile throughout any adversities that you have on these jobs. But once you get your own, you still have to be smiling because you have customers and consumers. So again, I started at Simon David, then I went to Dillard's. I sold shoes. I was pretty good with, with, with talking. I wasn't too bad look to look at, you know? I think that was my advantage, you know? I wasn't too bad to look at, and, 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 and those people were, um, um, you know, more reluctant to talk to me and deal with me. And then I went from that to selling furniture. You know, I went to, to work with a suit and tie, and oh, I thought I was the man. You know, I was doing basic things. And then, you know, you had to be on time, at Dillard's <laughs> every day. So I finally lost that job and a partner of mine said, hey man, he knew I was a salesman and he was a dent repair technician and he chased hailstorms to, uh, um, you know, for business. And then I would talk to the customers and then get business and sign them up and, and do the things that we needed to do, you know, talk to insurance companies and so forth. And he went to Nebraska and left me to, you know, kind of run the business. And he left a hood there. And I was, and it, it slowed down to a crawl. And I was like, I'm not going to sit here every day. So that hood, I started training to do paintless dent repair. When he came back, maybe a month later, I was fixing dents. And we fixed the deck lid together. And it took me, Oh, uh, maybe 45 minutes to fix that dead lid, which is a trunk, gave me 400 bucks. I knew it was on then. You know what I mean? I, I made 400 bucks the whole week that I was watching his deal. You know, I knew it was on then. So I took my skill because he, he, he wrote me a terrible check, which was cool. He finally made it right. But I took my skill to go sell what I'd learned. 
to the different, you know, dealers and so forth and so on. And I just grew from there. You know, I grew from there, from these these small uh, um, mom and pop dealerships to these large dealerships. The last time I fixed Thomas's car, I was over the whole uh, uh, body shop at um, Plano Ford. Remember you dropped your car off over there, Thomas? Plano Ford. That's how far it has come. I've come from, and I've been doing it 26 years now. I got a lot of extra little toys, but basically what you need to really know is God will make a way if you desire a way. And these drugs and alcohol and the environment and everything will kill any dream that you have. So you can start your business. Like you said, I did go down and get an account because I had to have a business. I've had an account for 27 years. That It blows their mind. You know, that that I started this business right on Buckner, you know, Buckner Avenue when, when you know, it was a small Buckner. But anyway, I just had a different path. And the knowledge that you um, has, has, has expressed, you know, I never went the credit route because I made, I didn't need no credit. You know, I just didn't need credit because... If I fix a hell car and take two days, I've made four grand. So my money was different from yours. You know what I mean? And I've been doing that for for years and years, you know, 26 years and, more, and plus. So I never, I still had the hustler mentality, you know? But now today, and even the, the home that I own, cash. But now today, I have a, 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 a different vision. I'm asking Thomas to find me some land so that I can play the game correctly. <laughs> you see what I mean? So I can, I'm just now catching on to playing the game correctly because my money came in so, you know, fluently. I didn't need that. But a lot of people need to know what you went through to get where you're going. You know what I mean? Where you've gotten because everybody's not going to be able to do painless dent repair. It's and so that inspiring. Was it's so and inspiring to see that, you know, even though y'all had different paths, it's so inspiring to see. Because one thing that y'all had in common was y'all took those baby steps. And, uh, and, and then you could see, and I mean, you could hear in each one of you, you guys' story was, you know, the, the word says that we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. He will exalt mm -hmm. us in due time. So mm -hmm. y'all showed through humility. Uh, you know, you took what you could could took the gifts. You sold shoes. Then you 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 went to another job, and that, and 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 through the act of humility, you became both. You became lucrative business owners, and that and 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 just did not have to return back to that life of crime or, right. or go back to the streets and selling drugs. So. There is always a possibility if you allow yourself the time, if you humble yourself, and if you it goes to show that if you humble yourself and allow yourself the time, that it doesn't take a long time. Because Stancy, you you know, I've seen you, well, I've seen Ralph and I've seen you, but I've seen y'all go, you know, go out there and get it. And it and it, it hasn't been over a long period of time. Before you think about it. You know, a lot of time had them pass by. I mean, a lot of time had them pass you by. But y'all took them steps to get where you are today. Yeah. And, uh, Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to say this here, too, uh, is that a lot of people, you have to understand, you got to cut some people off, some things off. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I'm the only business owner in my family. Uh, after 20 years in the institution, a lot of people don't know. They won't believe uh I've been in prison 20 years, and I'll tell you all the story when I was a supervisor at the airport, uh, wow. HVAC supervisor. Um, they like, man, come on, man. You ain't been no prison 20 years. I said, yeah. But I had to cut some people off. And they like, you tripping. Oh, now you got this. Now you got that. Hold on. Wait a minute. We started messing around before I was on this here because information you didn't use it and then the first thing they say well how did you get this what did you do to this, get this here and i'm steady sharing the information with them you know what i'm saying Ralph? i'm steady giving it to them mm -hmm. but 
Mm-hmm. The first thing they say, I know. Yeah, right. So when they say, I know, no, yeah, well, I didn't already. I didn't try to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I, mean, I, I tried, tried to give it to you. It, 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 but I tried it, 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 it worked for me. <laughs> it's either I know yeah. or I the tried to get it, yeah. it, it worked for me. One this, is the thing, this is the thing that I had a hard time yeah. with. <laughs> when I say listening, it's a difference between listening and hearing. Listening is doing what somebody tells you to do. That's already been there. That, that's a good way to, to advance yourself if you can listen. But a lot of times, think about it. If you're not in tune with listening, you don't know how to listen. It goes in one and out the other. Like when you're telling these brothers how to do it, they're listening. They're, they're standing literally in, in your presence, but they're not absorbing things. Sometimes yeah. you have to really concentrate on listening. Fancy, mute, mute yourself. Okay. Do you know what I mean? For whoever's out there listening, practice listening. Because you can hear a lot of people are listening. You think they're listening, but they're trying, they're thinking about what they're going to say after you talk, after you've spoken to them. If they can continue to listen to you, they will get more out of, you'll get more out of listening than you do talking. So if you can practice to listen, like the information that you have, Stacey, if they would listen, can, can actually listen to you, they could apply it, but they can't hear you. A lot of people can't hear you. A lot of people can't hear. They're just listening, but they're not a, a, absorbing it. I'm hoping I'm getting through to somebody because if you like a bar, you're sitting at a bar and you're talking to an educated man, right? And he's saying a bunch of stuff that's pertinent, but you don't really know what he's saying because you having practice listening. And then it's okay to ask questions. Wait a minute, you said such and such. What is the definition of that? Then you start listening. Then you start understanding. And then you can apply that information that you've gotten. You know what I mean? A lot of times I have to ask people, repeat what I said. They can't even do it because they weren't listening. Practice listening. That's the biggest key to success, listening and, and discipline and, and prayer and goals. I mean, and things aren't, this is another thing about us as a people. We're not used to planting a seed and watching it grow. We want it overnight. You know what I mean? And you have to be disciplined enough to, 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 to water that, that, that plant and watch it bloom into something like you have, my man. You know what I mean? You watch that grow and you're getting a new truck. You've watched your seed grow and it goes, but, but you know, I'm gonna have to go here and I don't want to. It was designed for us to fail as a people. It's not an excuse. Like I said in the beginning, we're all individuals. And we can do whatever it is that we desire to do. God has given us the power. But it was designed for us to fail. Those ghettos just didn't happen overnight. They didn't just put those there. We didn't decide to go over into the ghetto. That was a place that they put us. They wouldn't allow us to buy property there. So you haven't had an opportunity to get generational wealth. But I'm, that's okay. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you said that because I it's going to take me to the next point and it's about the housing because in the parole system a lot of guys when they come out of prison they can't find somewhere to rent they can't get an apartment because they background they can't right. lease a property because of their background but uh, Stancy can attest to this <laughs> might not be able to rent nothing you can't find nothing nowhere one thing about it FHA guidelines clearly states you don't have no matter what your background is, you can purchase a home. Amen. You know, and that's what a lot of young men don't want. The only thing that you have to do is get on your job, stay on your job six months, and you can get a home loan. A lot of people don't know that. Hmm. And uh, I've seen it happen so many times in real estate because I'm a real estate professional. 
I've gotten quite a few men that have gotten out of prison. I've uh, uh, gave them, made them first time homeowners by taking them down, let, watching them get, tell them to go get their job. I've seen them go get their job. I've seen them stay on their job, do, do what it takes to get their credit straight. And they purchase their own home because there's nothing like a man having his own home. It's one thing for a woman to, you know, it ain't nothing wrong with, you know, having a moving in with your wife or so on and so forth. But it ain't nothing like a man going out and getting his own place to stay. You know, it's just it gives them a whole nother mindset. And I've mm -hmm. seen them go and get anywhere from two hundred to three hundred thousand dollar home straight out of prison six months because they can't discriminate because of the fair housing laws. They cannot discriminate against you based on your background when it comes to personal home. It's answer you can tell them about your story and then uh, we'll, we'll let you talk about that. Okay, I'm going to shut up. Um, let, me, let me give you guys an example. I come out, like I said, I came out in 2012. I got my CD, I'm um, say, uh, HVAC license in, 2000, in December. Matter of fact, it was on my brother's birthday, October the 31st in 2013. Uh, from there, I started, you know, dibbling, dabbling and trying to understand the, uh, the, uh, the rules of uh, HVAC, not only the rules, uh, how to apply the skill. And I went from uh, climbing in 140 degree attics uh, to, uh, being a supervisor, push, pushing paperwork. Um, a lot, a lot of people, you know, they 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 understand that uh, they want that instant gratification, but life is not like that. That's in the streets. I've been in the streets. I lived in the streets. I moved money from state to state. I did all that. But the thing about it is that that short lived. You know what I'm saying? Because. They always say, uh, oh, Rob, you say what they sell us in the street, you're in the dead in, dead in, the, in the graveyard, or you're in the prison system. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so that once you once you understand that uh the tricks that's been played on us as a people, like Ralph was saying, that them ghettos ain't there for uh just by perchance, uh, once you understand that, you have to surround yourself with people uh that's smarter than you, number one. Mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, you know. So I can read and write, and I, I have an understanding. But uh, majority of the people I know are millionaires. And mm -hmm. somebody, somebody say, you know, two of my friends say, you know what, man? Hey, I want you to have what I got. So let me show you how to do this and that. But right. like Rob say, I sat in my partner's office one day. Uh, he got an office over here in Oak Cliff. Uh, humble brother, man. I sat over there and. We own five different screens. He buying cars from the auction, telling me to watch mm -hmm. this screen right here. And uh, he told me, he said, you know what, man? Uh, after I've been dealing with him for like three years, he said, man, I like you. You know why I help you? Because you don't, you ain't going to take no for an answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? You ain't going to take no for an answer, you know? And uh, not only you're not going to take no for an answer, but you when I have information, you go and do some research, you come back with other questions because I've been there. Mm -hmm. Um right. so you have you have a lot of a lot of people out here repairing credit. Us as a people, our credit is shot. But like Thomas say, six months on a job, you can correct that, man. You you got to understand how to how to uh, how to play the game. And playing the game is to understand the rule. There's a dummy, there's a book they call the dummy series, right? You can't say you don't know no more because the information age is right in front of you on this computer, on your phone. So you can't say, well, I don't, I can't learn this. I can't learn that. Uh, I don't believe that. You know. Yeah. So this information and start uh, find somebody who gets information to you. Hey, I, I, I can take this trucking industry and explain it to a five-year-old for a five-year-old can understand. I can take mm -hmm. my program that I put together and explain it to a five-year-old. Once you, that they say you gain knowledge, once you gain the knowledge of something, you understand what you have the knowledge of. So once you understand it, you have wisdom so you can teach it to somebody else. And that's how the uh, the chain go. You know, a lot of people say wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, but 
if you don't know now, how can you how can you understand something? You know, exactly. How can you give somebody how can you give somebody some information about the things that you've been through and there's no history? You don't have no history there. So that's that's how I say. Uh, no, uh, learn something and get and then get on the steps you're doing, and then you moved on playing. Uh, uh, moving to the housing situation, Thomas. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, don't know. Have, uh, I don't know what Ralph, I don't know what Ralph, doing. Ralph, <laughs> Ralph, Rich, Rich and Mike, Ralph. I'm telling you, Ralph, Ralph, can you mute your mic? Is... Ralph, Ralph, can you mute your okay. mic? I hear you, I hear you. Slow down. Wait, let me uh, see. All right, mute the mic. Uh, with, the, with the housing, uh, you yeah, have a minute, Steph, if you're all right. Uh, with the housing situation, uh, once 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 you get uh, a person in, inside this apartment complex and you can rent a house or whatever, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it like this here. A lot of brothers out there with sisters, they've been dating their sister, have kids by the sister, or he may not be a kid. You have to repair the relationship and get an understanding that hey, if we're going to be together, we're going to move forward together. If we're not, let's go on about your business now. Because uh, you 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 there with the sister, her kids or your kids, or whatever, you have a blended family or whatever. And some ground rules have to be down. Do you understand those rules? That's when you put your blinders on and say, hey, it's me and you against the world. And I tell my wife all the time, you either going to be down like four flat tires and four flat spares, or you ain't going to be down at all. You know what I'm saying? Because if a woman down, <laughs> if a woman is down with you like a tire uh, on a car, full flat, full flat, uh, flat, you ain't going nowhere. All four tires are flat. And then the sparrows that you got, they're flat. So I'm not going over. You ain't going over. Let's move forward. And then uh, my wife, uh, I, I, what I did to her, I said, hey, you got to learn the paperwork of this business. And see, that's my partner. You know what I'm saying? At first, she didn't want to learn. I say, look here. I'm busy doing these things here. I'm talking to brokers every day. I'm talking to all these people every day. When I send you an invoice, you got to, when I send well to call a bill of late, when I send you that, you create an invoice for it and go get our money. You know what I'm saying? And so that's, this is what she do. Um, and a lot of people, man, you know, you, you get to a point where uh, fear a lot of Call. You're scared to get out there and take that chance. You're going to die with some debt. I'm not going to lie to you. You're going to die with debt. But one of the, one of the things I, uh, in the business world, well, before the business world, you know, my, I had some two twin uncles. They used to tell me, hey, put your hand in your pocket. I'm like, what? Put your hand in your pocket. So I put my hand in my pocket. He put his hand in his pocket. One of the twins did. Another twin put it. He said, you never have no money if you got too many hands in your pocket. Meaning that every time you go in your pocket to spend something, you got five or six more hands reaching in your pocket, taking money out. So I, I took that concept and applied it to business. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm not a, a, a spin drift, they call it. I don't have the bling, believe it or not, tell us, uh, a lot of people don't believe I've been driving the same cargo van, 2005 cargo van for the last eight years. You know what I'm saying? And uh, <laughs> I bought my wife a new car, but that's my Carvette, that's my Lamborghini. And you know what I'm saying? I, I'm going to take that and I'm going to keep that forever. You know, but uh, I'm not a bling bling type of dude. If you know, I don't wear jewelry besides a wedding band, a wedding band, and, and a ring that I have. In regards of the different religions around the world, but you have to understand. You know, you got to have some discipline. You're spending the Nike tennis shoes, the Jordan. I never in my life bought a pair of Air Jordan, and I won't. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm like this here. Well, I'm gonna go spend that much money on a pair of shoes, and I can go get two pair of tennis shoes for that, that amount of money, you know? So you have to have some discipline. <laughs> you have to have some discipline. And uh, you can't be like they always should tell us growing up. You can't live like Jones. Your Jones is coming. But when you come to the house, the house is late. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about uh, 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 this and that. When I come home, like say you come home to your council, and that's one of the things you have to have. You have to have some discipline, some spending di uh, 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 discipline. And understand the finances. Get those books called the Dummy Series, Housing for Dummies, Finance for Dummies. It's it's a whole series that they. I used to read those books back to back in the institution, you know. And th these are the things I learned. And 
a lot a lot of brothers you know a lot of a lot of brothers that I run across you know you they want to learn but they don't know where to start and that's why I came in that I you know we used to, I used to be on the rec yard uh give y'all a little synopsis in, in, in institution uh I had wardens majors captains lieutenants CEOs right parole letters for me to come home uh once my once I did the program and I ran it for three years consecutively uh parole board asked me why I'm gonna let you go and uh I was like okay so I gave him had a look the little pamphlet when I first went into parole office and uh one of the parole office the lady she was crying you know she crying once I told her my story and the change I made as an individual she couldn't believe it and uh the guy like what makes your program different I said well I took every program TDC had to offer you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying and one one of the problems that I see with the program is it uh tell you about God is not telling the man about himself. You know, once he learn about yourself, you got to make some changes within yourself because if you don't make no changes in yourself, you know, uh, you be returning. You've been in that, in that what they call the recidivism door. Uh, one of the things that I always say uh, is the product of better men is a character and conduct multiplied by itself. That's my mission statement with the program. You know, uh, you, like like uh, Ralph was saying, the character, you have to have good character, good conduct, good conduct. You have to have these things. And, you know, you'll go further in life, you know. Like I say, that, that guy that was sweeping the floor, it ain't his job, but he went swept the floor because, you know, like when he get that extra time out, they first person they look to, you know. Like I say, if you have any questions or type of questions, I don't know. I'm I'm here. I'm always open for questions, and uh, I'm just trying to. I'm the type of person like this here. I try to give information uh, to to people that uh, who's trying to move to that next level. It's a, it's a thing in the trucking industry. They said drivers talk to driver, owner operators talk to owner. Hey man, I talk to a guy who's trying to learn and trying to move to the next level. You know, it doesn't make a difference if you've been driving for this company five years, 20 years, or just a year. You know, if he asks a question, I'm, I'm going to explain it to him, you know, what he needs to do to move to the next level. Okay, Denise, that's our 90 minutes. <laughs> so we can let you take it back over. Really appreciate you, Stancy and Ralph, coming on here and sharing y'all uh, stories and y'all paths. And uh, I think. I think what Stacy said best was, you know, you do have to watch your money, you know, and, and the way you said it is a little more educational than the way I was giving it to. My uncle sold lots of, of, of drugs and he said, Ralph, you can't never have no money if you spend it all. And the old man told me, like you said, these are things that I keep with me in my heart. Old man died, told me, Junior. Don't never live above your means. See, people today live above their means. And then that becomes the strife. Because you don't have, you're mad at somebody else because they have. But if you live within your means, you can have whatever you want. You don't have to have a a, a half a million dollar home to to, to, uh, impress the Joneses. Whatever makes you happy. Living within your means. You know, that's why I've never had to go get money from people. Because I live within my means. You know, I've stacked paper. But then I didn't go buy a two, two, three hundred thousand dollar home either. And then to have to deal with those people, you know, those people (laughs) have to stay on these jobs and have to kiss, you know, have this great attitude when you don't want to. When you live above it within your means, you don't have to go, uh, 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 yes, sir, Mr. Charlie, to keep driving your Cadillac. You can tell Mr. Charlie to go to hell. Excuse my language. But that's the truth. You know what I mean? Live within your means. And and um, you can't have money if you spend it all. Yeah. You well, know? Now, I, yeah. What you? Go ahead. I'm listening to you. You owe me. Oh, I was. I thought Ralph was giving. I mean, Stancy was going to say something. To me. Yeah. Uh, anytime that you uh, need me to come in and be. Some-
gov.com. Um, yeah, because I would like to, because we, we, uh, you all have a whole lot more to talk about. And so I would love to bring you all back on and continue this on a part two series. I would love to do that. If you all tell me when y'all are available, I, we will do that. Because I think this has been such a great conversation. I know we have been on here 90 minutes, so I don't want to take up all your time today because I know you have other things to do on a Saturday. So I would love to be able to have you all come back and continue to this conversation. And so we can, uh, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, get some people on here that really need, I mean, I want people to really know, I mean, we all need it because I, I love what you all were talking about as far as spending, because, you know, so many of us spend money like, you know, that, that's a whole nother section by itself. Let's just say that. And about mm -hmm. living within our means and, and budgeting. And I mean, I mean, we, everybody needs that. I, 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 I'll, I'll raise my hand. And so anyway, because, because, you know, women are really good about spending sometimes and so men are a little more frugal sometimes because I know I, my brother's frugal. I said, I must didn't get that gene. But anyway, we, you know, but I, no, I didn't get it. And so anyway, he but knows, I, I got it. I'm getting it he now. Knows, he knows he's had to do that back breaking work and be Superman. See? Yeah. <laughs> T.D. Jay I mean, said the other day, T.D. Jay said the other day, men are dying faster because of trying to be a hero to all the, you know, be the men are dying more because they're trying to be men. It's hard to be a man. So if you don't have any money uh, uh, and you're spending it all, you know you don't have to work and break your back to get it. Mm -mm. So that's why we don't spend it. it. I don't stop that spending. That spending ain't got me nowhere. So I said, let me let that go. So I pay my bills and pay off stuff. That's been my spending, paying off and paying, paying and paying off. And so that I can be, you know, in a better place, because that's just what I want to do, because, you know, we all want to retire at some point, but we want things to be paid off when we get ready to retire. Now, Stance, he got some artwork up there that he, that his, is it your nephew, niece? Beautiful. Somebody, they drew, I can't, you on mute, we can't hear you. Hold on, see if I can take you out. You muted, yes. Yeah, yeah. these were motivators, you know what I'm saying, when I was an institution. Uh, I always tell a brother, you have to protect our women, because, if you notice, the world is in our stomach. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? That, that, there's a symbolism to this here. And, uh, you know, people, you know, you can make your own understanding of it. Another one is that uh, breaking the chain of ignorance. You know, mm -hmm. whether you're ignorant in, in, ignorance in, uh, in uh, dealing with the finances, dealing with business, uh, dealing with relationship, all that, yes. those are chains of ignorance that we have to break. If you notice, there's a heart behind that. You know, yes. uh, also the heart is in, in the chains. And that's what a lot of brothers you're in that institution, you're in the chains, or you uh, in that institution, but then the heart has to be broke too. The heart yeah. is ignorance too. Uh, another one is that uh, we can attest to this here, uh, Ralph, the made man. You see, he chiseling himself out. You know, he's chiseling himself yeah. out that granite. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, but, you know, you just have to have, you know, it, it excites me because uh, the transition I made and then. I don't mind sharing this information, but brothers like Ralph say you got to listen. If I tell you to go down the street, make a left, then make a right, go down the street, make a left, and make a right. You know what I'm saying? And that's uh, the key. Yeah, that's it. Because how many people have has attested to getting directions from somebody and then ask the partner, "What did he say?" You know what I mean? Because they don't better not listen. You have to practice listening. That's a big key to success, practicing listening. Because he said, go left, then take a right. It said, what did he say? You weren't even listening. You was hearing him, but you didn't listen. Exactly. You know? I think before I leave, I would like to express to anybody in a situation where they want to better themselves, the first step that you need to do is fix your environment so that you can go out and be productive in the world. I don't care if you're living in the projects or whatever. Clean it up. If you want to paint it blue, paint it blue. Make it, you know what I mean? If, if, if you make 20 bucks, go find something that's going to enhance your environment. You know what I mean? Enhance your environment. You'll have a better outlook on life. And then once you continue to enhance your environment, you're going to move out of those situations. You know, the, the projects and the in the, the 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 lower you know uh 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 financial districts 
then you'll find yourself moving up. And then, I mean, it's, I've been in neighborhoods where it's really depressing to just, just to pass through. Can you imagine living in that neighborhood consistently every day? Right, exactly. You know what I mean? It's your environment that really captivates, that, 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 that controls your mind. Exactly. And a lot of us are in, in positions where we can't change our environment, but you can change your immediate environment. Right, by picking it up, making it look better, exactly. making it look better, all of those things, which, which will help make you feel better. It really does. Exactly. Make it better. gives you self-esteem. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and if you can't afford a haircut, make sure you comb it every day. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just the small yeah. things that we yeah. have, you know, that, that people, it's the small things that make us grow. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? The little bitty goals. It's this is with, like you said, you plant a seed and you have to watch it grow. That's it with exactly. your environment, with your health, your goals, your willpower, and all of those things. But I'm going to be honest with you. God did it because I was out here knocking on these doors and, and, and these people were telling me, no, 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 have no, to no. tell him off because we got to go. Okay, no, 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 no. And um, I said, this is God's world and I'm going to make it wherever he allows me to make it. So I'm done. Because oh, we do have, I mean, you all have so much more to give us and I really want to, hear it so we'll have to make us another date and we get together and talk some more if y'all if y'all willing to do that i would i would love to do it sure will. okay so we'll we'll make that date we'll talk about that and uh when we get off the phone out, off of here and we'll make a date for you all to come because you have a lot more to give and so i'm just so thankful for your time today we have had an amazing time and we've had some great discussion from these two gentlemen about about the process and about their journey and so I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, people will share this and, 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 and have people listen to it that need to listen to this, I mean, these conversations and that will help improve your life. And even if you haven't been incarcerated, exactly. he said some amazing things about just cleaning up your environment to make you feel better and, 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 and working on your credit and working on your finances. They said some amazing things for everybody. So this just wasn't for people that were, you know, have been incarcerated. This is news all of us can use. I'm gonna say it just like that. Oh, really? We as news all of us can use to better our situation, to better our life. And and like he was saying on the end, you know, you can't spend all your money just because you made it, don't mean you gotta spend it. Put some up, save some, and do some other things with it. I like, you know, during the pandemic, I started investing. And so I had never really done that, no more than my 401k and those kind of things, but I started doing my own investing. And so I saw how it was growing. I thought, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So anyway, some things that cause you to go in different directions that will be a blessing to you. Thank you all so much for being a part of Impact Moments today. We're going to put this out. It'll be out there on YouTube, and it's going to be on our Impact Moment website. And our, uh, hopefully I'm getting a YouTube page for Impact Moments, and so that it'll be out there as well. Thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you for your thank time. You, and all those thank you, Thank you, Yes, all of those that joined us, I thank you, thank you, thank you. And so we will be back here, be back again with these gentlemen on the line and they can give us some more insight because he said something about, about a relationship. Both of them said something about relationships. Oh, they, they got a lot to talk about that. They have a whole lot of people. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was getting excited about a whole bunch they were saying. So anyway, we need this kind of information. We need these kind of discussions to help our communities and everybody that we know. So thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time. I really appreciate it. And this has been Denise and Thomas. We've been your host and co-host today on Impact Moments. Thank you. <laughs> I'll call y'all. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.